Hi, Michael Bettine here once again for a cup of time extra. This is a short version answering a couple of specific questions that recently came my way. So let's get right to it. The first question came via YouTube from Andromeda. What would you recommend to Mike Gongs? Been struggling a little. And the second question came from Christine via Facebook. Recording question. Have you ever used a high-end mic for gongs and or bowls? Everything I have read says that something expensive like, say, a Neumann U87 isn't necessary. Well, that's a great question, both of those. Right here, this is a Focusrite Scarlett 4i4 interface. This is to go between the microphones and your computer. And this one has two inputs for microphones, and it has two outputs to go to monitor speakers and a USB to go to your computer. This is about a $240 interface. And this one lives on my desk. This is a great little unit. I use it to plug my headphones into and just listen to music, or if I'm mixing recordings to mix down through headphones, and I have the back outputs going to my monitor speakers. And when I'm doing like voiceovers or things at my desk, I'll plug a mic into it because it's really simple and I can just do stuff right there. This is a great little unit. It's got good preamps, pretty good specs. It's fine. But again, it's $240. Now, if you have a high-end Neumann microphone, some of those are three, four, five, ten thousand dollars $10,000. This is where I think people get the idea or people say, well, it's not necessary to have, you know, real good Neumann mics or other quality mics from other companies. And I go along with that, but there's, you know, there's more to it than just saying, well, you shouldn't use high quality mics. It's not that you shouldn't use them. It's that if you have, let's say you're going into your laptop and you have an interface like this, to plug a $3,000 microphone into this in a lot of ways is wasting a $3,000 microphone. You would be better off not buying a $3,000 microphone, but buying a couple of maybe $500 microphones or maybe a $1,000 microphone. Now, if you've got a real professional recording setup and you've got a big mixing desk and a really great preamp outboard rack mount preamps and stuff, okay, then having high-end microphones running into that setup, those are going to take advantage of what those microphones can do. Something like this little focus right here, it really can't take advantage of all the quality that a high-end Neumann or other microphone can produce. It's not saying it won't work fine. I mean, you could plug a Neumann, you could plug a high-end Telefunken, you can plug, uh, I could name all kinds of microphones, AKGs, whatever. You could plug all kinds of high-end microphones, high-end boutique microphones that are handmade in you know small quantities, whatever. You can plug them into here and get really great recordings. The thing is, if you're just starting out with recording, there's no need to buy thousand, two thousand, five thousand dollar microphones. There's no need to buy two thousand, three thousand dollar mic preamps because you're not gonna know what to do with them and how to get the most out of them. So I think that's where that sort of comes, the idea that you don't need high-end mics. Well, it's not that you don't need them. It's just that most people don't have the auxiliary gear to get the most out of really high-end microphones. So let's look at microphones and just kind of take a quick look at, okay, what would you rec recommend to mic gongs? As Andromeda asked. First thing I would say is, what do you have? You could use that as a starting point, but then 
there's two divergent things. Do you want to mic your gongs to record? Or are you micing your gongs for live sound reinforcement? So those become two very different, in some ways, very different things. But that's the first question to ask yourself. What am I doing this for? Am I trying to amplify the sound of my gongs because I'm playing in bigger places? Or am I trying to recreate the sound of my gongs so I can make um, downloads or CDs or something like that? But again, start with what you have, if you have any sort of microphones. If you go back, and I'll link it down below, I have a short series on recording. And the first thing I would do, if you're just getting into this, is buy a small handheld digital recorder, like a Zoom or a Tascam unit. They started like $100 on up, so you can spend $100, $200, $300, make some really nice recordings, and learn all about recording. Learn about mic placement, learn about you know all sorts of different things. I would start there. Just a little digital recorder. They're easy to carry around. They're self-contained. You record everything on there, then you can dump the files into your computer and put them in your favorite music program, whether it be Audacity or GarageBand or Reaper or Logic or whatever. And then you can work on them, edit them, and process them from there. That's where I would start. And that's basically where, where I started with a small recorder. So. Again, I'll link that series down below, and you can check that out. And I talk all about different digital recorders. Other than that, like I said, what gear do you already have? I'm assuming maybe you have an interface and some microphones. Start with whatever ones you have. If you don't, and you don't want to go the self-contained digital recorder route, you're going to have to get yourself some sort of interface. And you can get these from about $100 on up. You can get single channel ones, two channel, four, eight channel. And it so much depends on what you want to do. I like the Focusrite stuff. I think it's built really well. I think you get a quality sound out of them. Uh, the preamps seem to be pretty nice. The features are pretty nice. They're very easy to use. And like I said, this one is two channel and it's like $240. And I got this one because it has a few extra in and outs on the back that I can run things into it and that. But you can get a more basic two channel one is about $200, I think, from Focusrite. It's great. There's a lot of nice two channel ones out there in the two to five hundred dollar range so you need to get an interface to plug into your computer and then plug your mics into the interface as far as mics you could start a lot of people have dynamic mics sitting around this is an old old audio technica i've got like four of these that i bought 40 years ago this is an atm 21 it's a basically a dynamic instrument mic similar to a Shure SM57. It's really a great mic. It's really well built. I, like I said, this is 40 years old. They still work. They've been all over touring, miking my drums. And when I first started recording and got an interface, a different interface than this, but I started with a two-channel interface and I used two of these mics, dynamic mics. I made a lot of recordings with these. And they sound fine. Nothing wrong with them. You know, I'm not trying to create a, a Michael Jackson recording or you know something like that. That's going to be super high quality and a million people are going to buy. I'm just mainly recording for myself and you know maybe some downloads and that. But I started out with this. I recorded a lot of things with just two dynamic mics. You could even just record with one mic if you're not that interested in having stereo. If you just want to hear what you're doing, this is fine. These are also fine for if you need to amplify your sound. If you have a sound system, plug this into your sound system and mic your gongs with it that way. From there, as I got more into recording and allowed 
more budget for recording gear, I moved up into some condenser mics. So let's look at a couple types of condensers here. This is what they call a small diaphragm condenser. You can see it's a very small mic. Sometimes they are called pencil mics because of the shape. They're very small. And you can see here is our diaphragm. It's pretty small. These are great little mics to do so much recording with. I like to use a stereo pair of these in either an XY or an RTF pattern. Again, refer to that earlier series, mic series, um, to record things. I started out with some fairly inexpensive ones and they did the job. And as I got more money, I got better ones. These are SE8s. I happen to like SE mics a lot. I really like the company. I like um, sort of their philosophy and the fact that it's run by a classical musician who really cares about sound. He founded the company, a Chinese classical musician. So I like that whole idea of the company. And I think their mics are really a good value. You can get a stereo pair of these for about $520, either in a cardioid or a stereo omni pair. These are great. I use them all the time to record things. The other way you can go, you can go with what's called a large diaphragm condenser. And I don't know if you can quite see it in there. Yeah, you can kind of see it shining in there. There you go. Let me get that light right on it here. There you go. You can see the diaphragm much bigger than this one. I can get that to shine again. There we go. So it's called a large diaphragm condenser. And the sound comes in this way, not this way. It comes in from the front here. These are great. They're a little more high quality. This one has multiple patterns that I can change it to. And these run about a little over $1,000 for a pair. Great mics. And there's so many companies making really good mics in that $500 to $1,000 range for a stereo pair, even up to like $1,500. I mean, AKG, Bayer, um, Lewitt Audio. Uh, geez, I could go on and on. You know, Sure, um, SE, all these different companies. There's a lot out there. And what I recommend is to do what I did. Go on YouTube. Look up videos, check out different mics, go on the company's websites, go on SE's website, read all about their mics, go on Shure's website, go on Telefunken's website, go on AKG's website, and educate yourself. And then go on YouTube and look up how to record videos. A lot of them are geared towards rock and roll. Probably 99% of them are geared towards making some sort of a rock pop record. But you can get a lot of usable information off of those. So you got to do your homework. You got to educate yourself. There's also some good recording books out there. And that's all I did. I, besides working with them and working in recording studios and, you know, talking to people there, talking to engineers and getting recommendations. So, again, you don't need high-end mics to record your gongs unless you've got all the gear to take the use, you know, and, and get the most out of high-end mics. Now, consequently, Christine here, who asked about that, she says she's got like four high-quality Neumann mics. So it's like, yeah, go ahead and use them. That's fabulous. I mean, I wish I had a whole bunch of Neumann mics. I was just in the recording studio Saturday and they were using Neumann mics there on my setup. So yeah, if you have them and you know how to use them and you have the gear to get the most out of them, great. If you happen to have some Neumann mics or other high-end ones and all you have is a Focusrite or something like that, still go for it. I mean, they're good quality mics. They're gonna give you an exceptional sound and they'll max out your little box here and you know you you'll get the best sound you can but if all you have is some sort of a dynamic mic like an sm57 or some instrument mic use that it's a great place to start 
Now the other category is USB mics. A lot of us have USB mics because we're doing a podcast or on Zoom. So instead of using our funky little computer microphones, a lot of people have invested into a USB mic. Well, a lot of USB mics today are really high quality. In the past, they were pretty suspect. But today, many of the companies like AKG and Lewitt and all these other companies, their USB mics are basically a version of one of their better mics that is set up to run through USB direct into your computer. Now you will have a built-in preamp, so you don't have to have something like this. You can just plug and play. If that's all you have is a USB mic, use that. The only problem with a USB mic is usually it's a short cord, so you're going to have to get your whole computer, your laptop or whatever, you know, pretty close to where you want to record from. Whereas something like this, you could run 200 feet of cable and, you know, to your computer and your interface. It, you've got an advantage there. But any sort of mic will do. If you're starting out, check out my series down below and you know, just start somewhere. If you don't have a lot of money, like I said, start with a digital recorder. And some of them will also allow you to plug two or four microphones in besides their built-in mics. So you can grow from there. Get something that has two built-in mics, two jacks. As you get better, you buy two uh, pair of stereo mics. Then you start using those, which will have better quality than the built-in ones, and go from there. And then from there, you're like, hey, I'm really into this recording. I want to up my game. You get an interface to plug into your computer, into your laptop, and then you get an even better sound and usually more control over what you're doing. So that's it, kind of a quick version of this, answer a couple of questions. So keep the questions coming and we will see you next time.